So moving on to our fourth reason why we should think about moving to Autodesk Navis Works is really, I think, one of the most important ones, especially when we're thinking about the large amounts of data that we're dealing with when working with Navis Works itself. Again, if it's a plant layout, an assembly line, some type of factory, a building, whatever the case may be, it's extremely important that we understand any interferences that we may have with our data as we bring in all this data into a single file. Now most general softwares, your design softwares, do have some type of interference detection, clash detection, things like that, but no one does it any better than Navis works itself. The speed, the accuracy as we can go through it. Also the options we have. We have two different options that we can work with really. One is a hard clash, just identifying two items that absolutely they're running into each other. We also have what we figure a clearance or what I like to consider a soft clash. So that means I can actually <clears throat> put in a general distance that items cannot be um, a certain distance from one another. So I'm going to show that in my next example here, working with Navisworks. Again, I believe the most important portion of working with Navisworks itself is identifying interference. So here we are back in Navisworks. Again, we're taking a look at this clash detection itself. So again, very easy to set up. And imagine all the data I have here. I would imagine there's probably with the work cells that I have in here, the structure of the plan itself, there's probably at least 50,000 components, you know, at a minimum. So the clash detection itself, I can go ahead and open up here. I'll just pin this to my startup menu. When thinking about our clash detection, we got to think about one thing is, one thing we've seen with Navisworks is ease of use. So when, when working with clash detection, it's pretty standard, pretty simple. As I mentioned, first thing is to come through and select the geometry that we want to do our interference checking with. So in this case, uh, maybe it's a few items, maybe it's a few um, areas, stations, things like that inside of my design. I have some options in here. Do I want to look at solid geometry, centerline information, and point cloud data? Again, a lot of plants these days aren't typically 3D yet. Some are. So there's a lot of laser scanning that goes on so we can also utilize point cloud data if needed. In this case, I'm basically, my first one is I'm going to do a, a hard clash. So basically two things that just absolutely are running into each other and then I'm going to work with um, a clearance or the soft clash. So in this case, I've selected you know, a couple areas of my design um, on the left hand side here, on the right hand side, and I'm going to clash these things with all my structural supports for the building itself. Now real time, I'm going to go ahead and start this. So I'm doing my solid bodies between the two. I'm going to go ahead and start this, let Navisworks do its thing, and it's already done. We can go ahead and look at the results. It's compiled the results for us. And here, there's, it's found four results. By go ahead and identifying these results, we can find that I've done some markups. I have some clash, some interference on these areas. Again, very nice layout, very easy to find, awesome and extremely fast. We also have the benefits of when acquiring this information to be able, again, share and collaborate this information at the same time. So we can actually go through and run a report of the clashes that were found. Let Navisworks go out, collect that data for us, maybe snap a JPEG or a picture of the area that's clashing. We can add some notes with the markup tools as we saw, and we can go ahead and write this report. So after writing the report, we can go ahead and take a look at the report. This is a, just a, a very basic report that I um, produced out of Navisworks itself, identifying the four clash areas inside of my design. Gives a little bit of information about um, what the clashes are, the, the item names, and really gives us some information to now where we can pass this on to others so other people have a very easy to read copy of this report to go through help and fix these problems before it's too late or too expensive. So now we're going to take a look at what I call the soft clash or the clearance that's available within Navisworks itself. Again, this time I'm going to be able to identify um, you know, a, a distance between items. Something can't be closer than to whatever I specify in distance. I'm also going to make some changes here. I'm going to include point cloud data. Again, a lot of plants these days have scanned information that I'm going to be able to utilize inside of Navisworks. In this case, maybe I'm adding some new pipe information to a boiler room. Um, maybe it's all carrying you know, high, high amounts of temperature. That there at least needs to be some type of clearance in here or some type of soft clash that I'm going to be running. 
So here I'm going to do my, my pipe runs themselves with my boiler room, just taking them out of my history tree, my selection sets. I'm going to make sure I include the point cloud data because I know I'm going to go through and verify that. I'm going to have my clearance set up and I'm going to do a five millimeter check. So again, just as quickly as we did our, our hard clash, Navisworks is going to be able to produce our soft clash information. This time, it's not all about 3D data. It's about going ahead and utilizing that point cloud data. So Navisworks is done um, with that. So I can go ahead and look at my results. And here I am. I'm in my boiler room. And I can see that even with this point cloud data, that it's found with the rules I've set up, I may have some problems in this area. So we're really going to have to take a look at maybe some of the maintenance um, items, some of the routing of the pipes to go through and verify and clean up this area to re-ensure that we have the proper clearances so we can prevent any unforeseen dangers down the road. Or if I'm just trying to place new information like this new white pipe I have in here, that we definitely get enough clearance and really take a look at rerouting that information. So again, interference checking, whether it's a hard or soft clash or clearance, um, I believe, again, is one of the most important items and one of the most important functionalities that we're going to be able to utilize um, using the Autodesk Navisworks tools. Now thinking about my last reason, reason number five, why we should be considering Autodesk Navisworks. It really comes down to, in one, you know, two words, I guess, team collaboration. How do we share our information outside of Navisworks? Well, there's multiple ways of doing this, and we're going to be taking a look at that. One, there is a product that's absolutely free called Navisworks Freedom. Allows us to open any file generated from Navisworks. Has much a similar user interface as Navisworks Manage that I've been using throughout this presentation. How about that commonly used DWF file? So we can use that free software design review also to share our files. Is it an animation we want to share, a rendering we want to share? We really can take a look at multiple ways of sharing these files in many different formats at many different levels. How much power do we want to give the people we're sharing this documentation with? Do we want to give them the ability to do markups and bring it back to us? Do we want them just to see some pretty pictures? We have the ability to meet all needs when publishing outside of Navisworks. Let's go ahead and take a look. The last time, here we are, just in back, I'm back in Navisworks Manage. So we're talking about sharing our files with whoever uh, may be part of our team, outside vendors, people doing other things other than what I'm doing or my sole purpose on this project. So some awesome things we have is the ability to export information. So we have the ability, to, of course, you know, as we saw, we can export our clash um, detection results. But again, that Autodesk DWF file, Google Earth, rendering any of the images that we're producing inside of Navisworks, the animations, and more importantly, I think the idea that, you know, for other people to see our information, they can see it for free. They can evaluate it. They can look at it with a lot of the same capabilities that we have inside of just our Navisworks itself. So I'm going to flip over to Navisworks Freedom. Again, Navisworks Freedom has the same look and feel as the Navisworks Manage I've been working with. We can see our selection tree. We can get a lot of information from here. We have our published views in Freedom. So they can see, again, exactly what we were working with. Here's our whole plant layout. They can look at the animations themselves. They can actually play these animations back and forth. So Navisworks Freedom, again, gives them a lot of capabilities, zooming in and out, things like that to work with. Another great application, of course, is design review. So design review, again, allows us to take in the same information maybe we were working with inside of Navisworks, but now we, maybe we give a little bit more control to the people we're sharing this data with, the markup and measurement tools, um, those types of things that are available with design review. So if someone wants to take some measurements, if someone wants to do some simple markups, they want to you know, comment on an area, they absolutely have the ability to do that when working with um, you know, design review itself. And, and as I mentioned, you know, the renderings, the animations, all that information that we can produce to share with outside people. It's all possible when working with the Navisworks product itself. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Let's go ahead and do a brief closing.